robot has to go out on the field in five minutes. So having a version control system that is best in the world is, is really a wonderful thing. Um, and the uh, one thing, that I, and I'll show you a lot about this in the Java class, built into the language is this idea of Java docs in that a class should not only by using descriptive variables and using descriptive names, but it should have documentation built into it that should be available through the tools that it interfaces with it. Um, I think LabVIEW does this a little bit, um, where you can hover over things and it will kind of give you an idea of it. Um, but Java, yeah, but Java Docs was was written was the idea of Java Docs was created at the same time of Java, and they were done in tandem, so it's built into the language of how you document, how you read your documents, and, and that's for it. Uh, C++ has none of that. It's, it's the wild west of C++. So, some weaknesses, and we are lucky enough that we're going to experience this first one because this control system needs to be Flash. Um, the initial setup for Java is complex <coughs> and takes it a bit time consuming. Unlike C++ and LabVIEW with your robot controllers that the everything you need to start programming is already on or the initial update already puts it on. Java is interesting. It is a compiled language and every, all the Java pro, all the programs are going, no it's not, it's running a JVM. It's compiled to, not to assembly code, but it's compiled to J code and then that J code is then read by an interpreter and then actually made into real language. So you have to have that interpreter installed on whatever system you want to run Java on, and sometimes getting that right, the right JVM, the right Java virtual machine for your hardware can be uh, a task. Um, with this, it is a task. You have to make sure you have the right Java development kit, the right version on your, your, your computer that you're programming in, and that has to be matched with the right embedded Java virtual machine for the uh, for the Robo Rio. We'll see that there are several of them, and if you pick the wrong one, it won't work. And it takes about it takes a few minutes. It's not as simple as plug and play. As a high level language, you can with uh, you can really dig yourself into a hole if you start getting overly fancy and overly complex. does get, you, you are abstracted a lot from the code when you start making your own classes, when you start making your own packages, and handing back and forth, sometimes you lose yourself in that. So that's a, that, that's a definite problem for beginners. Um, it is not as beginner friendly as LabVIEW is. Uh, it is more beginner friendly than C++, but that's, that's a warning for, for the, those who are brand new to, to programming, brand new to the idea of it can be difficult to wrap your, your, your head around some of this, what's going on. Debugging and testing is not nearly as elegant as in LabVIEW. Um, there is no ability to simply drag and drop a class onto something and have a graph show up on your laptop showing you exactly what's going on. We get around this, at least last year we got around this by using a print line function or a print log function. Uh, Print line function either to an output, a terminal, or to a log file. Um, I would recommend in Java programming as well to do that. They, they have released some updates, uh, and I was going through it last night where that seems to have gotten better, but it is still not, oh, I want to, I want to clap, I want a graph of this. Let me just drag a graph and then connect it to a line. So you don't have that. Uh, along with debugging, not as elegant to live view, dashboarding. Or it is a bit more of an advanced task. We will not talk about it in the, the, the next programming lab. Are we good? Okay. So, do I think your mind box got to go to another session, right? Yeah. The session. Oh, let's, do we want to go through the. How many people, how many people are planning on going through the lab view session? Raise your hands. So, I think there's only one other person in the lab view room right now. So, if okay. you guys do a few more minutes to finish this presentation, I think that's fine. I'll just go tell the other room that you guys are wrapping up here. Okay. I don't want lab view to leave left behind. Is, is anyone planning on, on doing C++, programming in C++? Fantastic, we don't have any training on that. All right. 
So, uh, do you want to go through the mess? Yeah. We can move this. This is the one we need. So we're, we're skipping to the end here. Uh, there's this common mess. There's a common theory that C++ is bad. That my robot will run faster if I use C++ because it, it is a heavily optimized language. It compiles directly down to assembly language. And this, this will just, you know, I don't have to worry about JVM, about virtual machines interpreting my code. I don't have to worry about some archaic thing and with national instruments that isn't quite, quite there with this. This is incorrect. Don't, don't um, think this. It might be slightly true, but it's nowhere, it's talking like microsecond. Yeah, to the, they, they did a test last year of the three languages as to, and it's specifically with autonomous, when the field system sends the, hey, go to autonomous, which one goes into autonomous faster? Yes, C++ went to autonomous faster by something like four milliseconds. It's, yes, it's true, but as a human, you won't ever experience that. I mean, we said this thing, the RoboRio is a specialized processor. So anything that really needs to be fast, things like um, some sensors that you need to really block. sample really quick, because some of the really fast things are actually already done. So all the language is really just interface to kind of a central, um, the same library. So they're all really just an interface. So you're not really going to notice any. If you're worried about, oh, will, if I'm running a lot of stuff in a virtual machine, will it start to slow down and all of a sudden my PWM timers will start to slow down because they're not being interrupted? There's, there's something known as a uh, field, pro, uh, field programmable gate array. array. Um, anything like that is done in hardware, don't worry about it. And that's the same for all of them. Um, Will I lose capability if I already use that? So, is one language better than the other? Will I miss out on features if I'm using LabVIEW? Will I miss out on features if I'm using Java? So again, it's really just an interface. So, there's, all the languages are basically equal. If you already use Java, Python, if you already use Python. Don't use uh, Python. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't use Python. <laughs> um, then, there's really nothing that you can lose. Some things are easier in one language versus another. You can do everything in every language. That's part of what makes them a language. If, if you can't, then they messed up. Uh, Java's a memory hog. Yes, but no. Uh, yes, the virtual machine actually does require resources that both C++ and LabVIEW did not use. The amount of memory on here is more than enough to be cut for what you're going to do, and what you're doing is not a problem. Uh, if you were to load in massive files and store them in memory as, as giant arrays, if you were doing lookup values for shooting them, if, if you were to get uh, have a gigantic, and I'm, I'm talking uh, millions of fields, uh, of a lookup table of exactly how fast I should move my motor to shoot a ball into that hoop. Yes, it's a memory hog. But that's, I don't think you're ever going to do that. Uh, bottom line, you're fine. I've, I've never heard of anyone running out of memory. Uh, I've never heard of memory uh, errors with inside of um, on, on this device. Okay, so the last, last piece is finally, what language do you choose? Um, so this is just kind of recommendations uh, that, uh, that we kind of came, came up with. Uh, the, kind of the most important, uh, what do your mentors know? What do your students know? Uh, so I saw a lot of hands go up when he said who uses Java. It sounds like a lot of you probably maybe do it in school. Um, if your school does Java, it's a really, if, yeah, if you, if you have, if your school teaches Java as part of this computer science program, by adopting Java as your platform, you possibly increase your, men, your members, your knowledgeable members by however many people are in each of those Java classes. You possibly added an additional teacher sponsor by saying, hey, we do Java, you, you teach Java, come teach Java. Uh, 
Use of resources you have. Um, I've got a fabulous wood shop. I've seen robots built out of wood because they have a fabulous wood shop. I've seen robots that are wonderful that are all, they, they've got a whole framing, metal framing uh, uh, shop in, in their classroom. So their robot is built out of metal framing. If your school teaches Java, it's the same thing. Code, hardware, if you know it, you know it. And what makes the most sense for your team? If you're a new team and you know nothing about, you haven't had zero experience with any programming, that seems really a good way to go. I'm sorry. It, no, I'm not apologizing. If, if, if you know nothing, that view is a good way to go. Uh, if you are either taking computer science or you plan on taking computer science and you plan on going that route, that would be a great way to go. Or C++. We're not talking about C++ here. I think we made it kind of difficult to actually choose. There's, there really is no wrong answer. As long as you stick to the official languages, or if you, um, you know, if, as long as you stick to the official language or languages, then there is no wrong answer. So, okay. What about licensing? Is there an issue in terms of licensing? I think the only one they need to license is LabVIEW. Uh, for the NI, uh, for 